Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mevlana Rumi Katta Salahu Sırı says, Beyond good and bad, there is a fi- field. I'll meet you there. Oh. What does this mean? You're asking me about Mevlana Rumi? His words are endless. He's a Quran in Persian. But a very good question you ask. Because I've been thinking of that same particular line in, for years. <laughs> I'm not kidding. For years I've been thinking of that. Not just to make up my own stuff and say, oh, it means this, according to this it means this, but looking at it with what Shah Effendi has been teaching us. Because the words of a saint can only be explained by a saint. No scholar can explain. Even if they explain, it will not do you any benefit. It's not going to touch your heart, your spirit, no benefit. It can give you the most intelligent, the most clear explanation not going to touch you because the words of a saint have to be explained by a saint then it'll touch your heart we are not of course we are not but our share is sahibul safe and sometimes he makes us to understand certain things sometimes he makes us to understand when we understand, we keep quiet because we say we don't hear him openly saying this. But later on, slowly, he does. Then you say, oh, Alhamdulillah, he put something in our heart to make us understand. Right and wrong. Good and bad. Some people translating, uh, good doing and wrong doing. There is a field, I'll meet you there. Nice translation. Halal and haram. There is a field. I'll meet you there. What is between now? Halal and haram. Right and wrong. What you must do, what you must leave. What you can do and what you cannot do. What is that field there? What is that space there? What is it? Huh? No. Shariat is right and wrong, good and bad. That is Shariat. It's easy now. Hmm? What is it? You say. Voluntary? No. Not what is voluntary. What are you saying? Shariat is a free will. Closer. Not there yet. It's not shariat, so it has to be something higher than shariat, which is what? Let's not talk about marifat, hakikat, whatever. You say. Okay? Do things voluntary. It is beyond voluntary now. Now, it is beyond free will. Understand? Voluntary means you still you use your will, no? Now this is when we're touching free will. What is beyond free will? You say free will, but there is something that is beyond free will. That is what? No. Close to that. But it's not enter into that because it's just muddies everything. Okay? What we said before. I said something before. What is beyond free will now? It is the will of Allah, isn't it? Is Allah beyond good and bad? Of course. Sharrihi min khairihi. It's coming from Allah. Good and bad is coming from Allah. Beyond good and bad. Yeah, they say God is good. God is beyond good. And God is beyond what you think is good and what you think is evil. What is Tasawuf teaching? Hazrat Rumi, Qadr is teaching Sufism. He is not describing it. He is not writing poem to describe. He is teaching us to bring us closer to Allah. And what is he teaching us? 
that the free will that Allah has given us, what is our Shaykh teaching us? Sahib al said this so many times. The free will that Allah has given us, we give it back to Allah. You understand? You sacrifice the free will that Allah has given to you and you say, Samina wa ta'na. We hear and we obey from you, not from us, not what we think is good or bad, right or wrong, using our own free will. No, we give the free will back to you. Our will is now your will, Ya Rabbi. Submission. And submission, you can never get it if you don't have love. If you don't have submission, you don't have love. Because the lover submits, he never stands up to show himself. He says, it's you. It's not me. So that, I don't want to say love, because it will be suddenly everything becomes deflated. Everyone's talking about love. It becomes the cheapest word with no value at all in these days. I love French fries. I love pizza. I love Allah. I love everything. You cannot. Now, the ashk, you may use that, but a lot of people don't understand. It is this overriding thing. It's not you anymore. It's something else has overtaken you. You give that free will back to Allah. And now it is Allah's will that is acting according to you. It is not you anymore. It is Allah. That's why I said it's not complete. Coming back to what? Coming back to what? Who knows what I'm going to speak about now? Wrong. I'm going to give you the proof. From where I'm going to pick up the proof from? Hadith Qudsi. Anyone? The servant becomes beloved to Allah if he does the obligations. Sounds familiar? Yes, hadith you could see. The servant becomes beloved to Allah when he fulfills his obligations. But he becomes, he comes close to Allah when? What? When he does things voluntarily, but he doesn't stop there. You're talking about shariat, you're talking about voluntary. And you're talking about free will now. Right? So, but when he does things that are not obligation, when he does things that is voluntary, what happens when he comes closer to Allah then? Even that action of being voluntary, it disappears. And then, meaning that free will, he gives that free will back, it disappears. And then what does that Hadith Qudsi say? Allah becomes his eyes that he sees, his hands that he touches, his feet that he walks now. That Hadith Qudsi goes on. We will dress him with Rabbaniyat. He goes on. I'm not going to speak now that last part openly. What happens then to that creature, to that man, to that one? He becomes Rabbani. Imam Rabbani, isn't it? Rabbani. Now Sheikhs they are Rabbani. Don't go around saying now, you are Rabbani, you are Rabbani, I'm Rabbani. We're not Rabbanis. Our Sheikh, they are. They may praise you, but if a man knows himself, he will never accept any praise. Be and it is. Now that time, you have given the free will because it's not according to your will anymore. Who says kun fayakun? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understand? So, he says, come. Come to that circle. I will meet you there. Our Shaykh saying, come. Leave your will. 
come to that circle, come to that turning. We will take you. You have to submit. You have to let go. That is very difficult to do for the ego. But that is Allah's destiny and plan for every man that Allah has created. Because the invitation is given to everyone regardless. That invitation. And what is that invitation called? Islam. Submission. Understand? May Allah forgive us. This is too high level. We are not knowing nothing. We are always fighting with our shares, questioning them, fighting with each other. Still at this animal level we are. But once we start letting go that time, yeah, of course you're going to disappear into the oceans of your share. Of course you're going to disappear into don't think it is so easy. People are talking out of their elbows about these things. Don't think you can disappear just by thinking that you are disappearing. You disappear. You will never be tested, then you'll never disappear. Allah is saying in the Holy Quran, don't think you're going to enter into their paradise and we're not going to test you. These days they're just sitting armchair Sufis going on Facebook, reading a couple of things, they think they reach the high level. Allah, Allah. Then why is it called the greatest struggle? So easy these days. So easy these days, they're saying. You can reach ma'rifat. So easy these days. You can reach hakikat just by keeping one ring, keeping one beard, doing this and doing that. Make some zikr and you can reach. Allah, Allah. Yeah. What is Holy Prophet Wasam said? What did he say to the man who says, I love you, Ya Rasulullah? Did he say, you love me, now you are in hakikat? Did he say that? He said, you love me, now you are in divine union. Some people are saying divine union. No divine union. He said, prepare for hardship. To even have the mind to think, oh, enter to tarikat to prepare for hardship. I'll be getting so many now mails from people. This is wrong teaching. Malana never say this. They never say this. It's easy, you know. So it's easy. It's all about love. Why are you making it so difficult? Why are they are going to say that? I don't care. You can say. I can say. So I'm saying. This is the greatest struggle. Prepare for hardship. We cannot reach nowhere. At least we are putting our heart, preparing it for our share. At least that. At least we are attaching ourselves to Him like dust to the shoes and to the sandals. It's okay. We're not hoping to reach His head. Say, so just be at the bottom of your shoes. Oh, my share. Oh, my prophet. Wherever you are, then you may bring us with you. That is enough for us. Amin Allahu Tafiq al Fatiha. What you m must do, what you must leave. What you can do and you, what you cannot do. What is that field there? What is that space there? What is it? Huh? No. Shariat is right and wrong, good and bad. That is Sharia. It's easy now. Hmm? What is it? You say. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Mawlana Rumi Qatta Sallallahu Alaihi says, Beyond good and bad, there is a field. I'll meet you there. Ah. What does this mean? You're asking me about Mawlana Rumi. His words are endless. He's the Quran in Persian. But a very good question you ask. Because I've been thinking of that same particular line in for years. I'm not kidding. For years I've been thinking of that. Not just to make up my own stuff and say, oh, it means this. According to this, it means this. But let's understand. Right and wrong. Good and bad. Some people translating uh, 
good doing and wrong doing. There is a field. I'll meet you there. Nice translation. Halal and haram. There is a field. I'll meet you there. What is between now? Halal and haram. Right and wrong. Looking at it with what Shah Effendi has been teaching us. Because the words of a saint can only be explained by a saint. No scholar can explain it. Even if they explain, it will not do you any benefit. It's not going to touch your heart, your spirit, no benefit. It can give you the most uh, intelligent, the most clear explanation. It's not going to touch you. Because the words of a saint have to be explained by a saint, then it will touch your heart. We are not, of course we are not, but our Sheh is Sahib al -Saif. And sometimes he makes us to understand certain things. Sometimes he makes us to understand. When we understand, we keep quiet because we say we don't hear him openly saying this. But later on, slowly, he does. Then you say, oh, Alhamdulillah, he put something in our heart to make us.